Welcome to the news in details that the President Kagame and his host, President Nusi, held a tete a tete meeting before proceeding with bilateral talks and the signing of an agreement on trade and investment cooperation between Rwanda and Mozambique. Also this evening in Pemba, President Kagame is attending a dinner hosted in his honor by Mozambican President Felipe Nyusi. The President of Republic and the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Paul Kagame, comments the work done by the Rwandan Armed Forces who are on a mission to restore security and stability in the province of Cabo Delgado in collaborations with their Mozambican comrades. Now, President say this is on the first day of his two-day visit to Mozambique. In the early hours of the afternoon, President Paul Kagame arrived at Pemba Airport in the capital, Cabo Delgado, where he was received by his Mozambique counterpart, Philip Nyusi. Dressed in the military attire, both heads of state headed to the Mozambique military base off the coast of the Indian Ocean in Pemba to hold talks with the army and the police who are on the fight against terrorism in the province of Cabo Delgado. President Paul Kagame praised the work done by the two armies and called on them to continue with the same spirit. We are grateful that you were able to liberate this province that was held by terrorists. We are grateful that you fought a hard war that was not easy. You did a tremendous job that required a lot of sacrifice. You worked day and night in the scorching sun while bullets flew all over and some lost their lives in the process. That is how it goes in the war. We lost soldiers who we are not together with today, even though some can say that there are few in number. By losing even one person is a huge loss. The work has just begun. You work to liberate this province, but the work we have now is to boost the security and rebuilding it. The visit by the two heads of state comes following a heavy fire exchange between the security forces and the terrorists that led to some of them losing their lives while others ran for their lives in the dense forests across the Misalo River. This also comes after the terrorists were moved from Fort named Bau, which then became the headquarters of the Army Chief Brigadier General Muhizi Pascal. Mozambican President Felipe Nyusi also said that the outcome of the two countries' cooperation in the war was self-evident and praised Rwanda's contribution in particular. We are grateful to Rwanda for giving us her children so that they can come here and join our forces to liberate the provinces that were infested by terrorists. They are our heroes. Our citizens are grateful to you for saving them and saving Cabo Delgado and stabilizing it. The Rwanda Armed Forces and the police who are in the peace mission in Cabo Delgado say that the visit by President Paul Kagame has boosted their morale and strength. We are very happy and proud that our president has valued us enough to come here and visit us after we were sent here to bring peace. It has given us morale. This shows how we are valued. We are happy and we feel very energetic to continue what we came to do here and make our country proud. In response to the Mozambican government's request and the agreement on security cooperation between the two countries, in July this year, Rwanda sent about 1,000 troops and police to the Cabo Delgado peace operation, especially those in the areas that had been devastated by their atrocities. And to this day, the population has begun to return to their homes. His Excellency President Paul Kagame says that Rwanda will continue to invest in tourism in order to increase the number of tourists visiting Rwanda. Now he made these remarks during the gorilla naming ceremony held on Friday evening. This Friday marks the 17th edition of the Kwiti Zina Gorilla Naming Ceremony, where 24 baby gorillas were named from 14 families, including 11 female and 13 male. 
Among the namers for the baby gorillas are a number of celebrities, including well-known Nigerian artist Mr. Easy, Rwanda's Patriots BBC captain Mugabe Aristide, Rwandan artist Bruce Melody, and others. The deputy chief executive officer of the Rwanda Development Board mentioned during the ceremony that there are plans underway to expand the national parks, especially the volcano, which is home to the gorillas. <laughs> Expanding the national park aims to increase the value of the area and increase productivity that will contribute towards the economy of our country. Another thing is that it will give new opportunities to the residents of the volcano park. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Kagame, commended all the partners who have joined Rwanda in taking care of the gorillas. He also said that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of people visiting the gorillas and the parks in Rwanda has declined, but that will not hinder Rwanda's plan to further develop tourism. Because of the pandemic, there has been a drop in the number of visitors across Rwanda. But the important work of conservation has continued. This includes the tourism revenue sharing program, which continues to finance valuable projects benefiting the communities around our parks. As visitors return, they will have the remarkable experiences that match their high expectations. The government of Rwanda will continue to invest in the hospitality sector both to drive economic growth and preserve our unique natural attractions for generations to come. We are testing and vaccinating as many people as possible to ensure that both Rwandans and visitors stay healthy. Our aim is to ensure that Rwanda remains a safe and inviting destination. The residents of the Volcano Park, which is home to the gorillas, expressed their satisfaction with the benefits they get from tourism. Gabi Movoni, reporting for RTV News. Thank you, Gabi, for that report. Now, in celebrations of the World Gorilla Day, those involved in conservation of gorilla are happy that they are well off and their numbers are increasing. On one hand, however, there is space in the park is getting smaller, hence the expansion of the pack area is in urgent need so that they do not go in the areas of residence. In the forest about 30 kilometers from Musanze to the site of the Karisoke Research Center, Diane Fossi Gorilla Fend, and the residents of Diane Fossi, known as Nyiramachibiri, which is 22 kilometers from Musanze to the entrance wall of the pack, with a height from between 2,700 to 3,100 meters below the Bisoke Obushokoro volcanoes, a journey was taken to inspect how gorillas are taken care of. In the past, there had been concerns that in a few years to come, gorillas would all die and become become world history. The Volcanoes National Park is one of the most densely populated gorilla habitants in the world. The animal has a human-like structure. At a height of just over 2,700 meters below the Bisoke volcano is a family of 14 gorillas, including four silverbacks and one two-year-old baby. Some are moving around and others are still eating. From the head of the family to their children, they are protected. The peace that gorilla do have now is due to the determination of the government and others concerned about the conservation of the biodiversity network, including the gorillas, that set out to deal with the problems that they were facing, such as kidnappings and other human activities that were disturbing their peace. In 1981, the census at the time showed that the number of mountain gorillas in the volcanic region, including the Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda, was 254, and now the number is 604. According to the 2016 census, the increase in the number is due to the efforts put into the conservation of the space in which they live in and putting a stop to some human activities that disturb their peace. Anyone that comes to visit gorillas is accompanied by a group of day-to-day -day conservationists. A tour guide accompanies the tourists. Before entering the forest, they are escorted by pack rangers and those with the knowledge of where they are at a certain time and how they act or breathe. The volcanic national park conservation activities are not only carried out by the government, but also by the Karisoke Research Center Diane Fossi Gorilla Fund and Doctors for Gorillas. They all contribute to the well-being of gorillas. The good strides already made in the preservation of mountain gorillas are not only seen and appreciated by park residents, but also by tourists.
On one hand, there are still obstacles concerning the security of the gorillas. The desired level of conservation is set to be in the next 10 to 15 years. The Senate has approved the basis for a new organic law governing law elections that is expected to determine how elections can take place in exceptional circumstances as a sign of democracy in the community. The draft of this new organic election law stipulates that the councillors shall be elected directly by the people at the district level rather than at the sector level, adding that no women elections that constitute of 30% of the women will be held at the sector level in direct elections. Candidates for the post will submit their candidature to the National Electoral Commission. The elections will be held directly at the district level and the election will be held on the election day in front of the members of the Electoral College, of the constituent sectors and the members of the Executive Committee of the National Women Council at the district level and the constituent sectors. The Minister for Local Government, Jean-Marie Vianney Gattabazi, explained to the Senate General Assembly the reasons for the bill and pointed out that the budget for the elections will be reduced and the manner in which the elections will be held in extraordinary circumstances. Uh, the other thing we want from this bill is that it will help us eliminate some provisions not met due to unavoidable circumstances like the COVID-19. There can also be an issue with the budget such that when we need to do the elections, the funds might not be available, yet elections are important for the citizens. We have citizens who complained that their leaders' time was up and that they did not allow them to prolong their mandate, but COVID. The citizens are now well informed of their rights and are keen on what their leaders do. <laughs> It is a bill the Senate General Assembly has approved, despite some senators expressing concerns. It has come to solve problems of the citizens and strengthening democracy our country is committed to. But I have an issue. In normal circumstances, elections were being held at sector level, which meant that citizens probably knew the candidates more compared to those at the district levels. I'd like to ask the minister if the councillors will be voted at the district levels by all citizens and if the candidates will be able to traverse the sectors to campaign since citizens have to vote who they know, yet we're still in a pandemic. Local elections are set to begin the end of this month. The Minister of Local Government asked the Senate General Assembly to consider the bill as soon as possible because the people want to elect their leaders. Normally, they will go to campaign for each sector and meet with the people in the area on the field and tell them their plans. Now the order will determine how they will be elected by the Electoral Commission because all the people are no longer able to go to the polls in the district council. In a recent discussion with the National Electoral Commission, we looked at how they can make this easier by the use of technology and they can even campaign via the same technology. The Senate Commission in charge is expected to go through the bill before it is submitted to the Chamber of Deputies for approval. The Catholic Church in Rwanda is going to send to the verdict a transcript of the inquiry into Cyprian Rugamba and his family in a bid to be declared a saint. This follows a conclusion into the investigation this Thursday. A full report will be sent to the Pope Cyprian. The legendary Rwandan poet, scholar and composer and his wife Daphros Rugamba were killed with six children in their house in Kigali during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi after a night of Eucharistic adoration. Ethan Tashobia reports. Dozens of Catholics and church leaders in Rwanda attended the closing ceremony of a nearly six-year inquiry into the Cyprian Lugamba and his family members who were killed during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. It is an investigation that precedes the process of applying for inclusion in the sainthood in the Catholic Church. Father Martin Wamungu, one of the investigators, said it was done with discretion. We listened to more than 80 people. We analyzed every information according to the set guidelines. It requires a person to go through the filter and find out if what is being said is true, even if the witnesses are saying things on their own. 
Although the investigations have been completed at the diocesan level, the process is still ongoing. Father Jean Bosco Nagunjira was in charge of the panel that conducted the inquiry. They are currently called the servants of God. Once the Rome receives the report, they will be called the venerable, and thereafter we will be waiting for a miracle to shine upon them. When it appears, Rome will declare them as saints. The Archbishop of Kigali, Antoine Cardinal Kambanda, says the fact that a Rwandan is considered a saint has a great significance, not only for the church, but for the country as a whole. It's a very important testimony of our faith in the church. The church always observes and identifies the Christians who have been great testimonies of uh, the love of God and the faith matters, it means witnesses or testimonies of faith, people who accept to die rather than, uh, say, rather than sin or separate themselves from God. Sipia and Lugamba's old friends and neighbors find that in addition to being considered as saints, their life contains important lessons that would help Rwandans in general. Ngarambe Francois Xavier is one of them. What I would say about them is their humility. They could approach the young, the old, the rich and the poor. Their door was always open to people who came minute by minute for counseling, for prayers and for various other meetings. Their home was like a spiritual and a physical hospital. A final report of more than 15,000 pages, including testimonies collected on Lugamba Cyprian and other members of his family who are candidates of sainthood, will be sent to the Vatican at the headquarters of the Catholic Church for further scrutiny. Cyprian, the legendary Rwandan poet, scholar and composer, and his wife Daphros Lugamba were killed with six children in their house in Kigali during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. After a night of Eucharistic adoration, reporting for our TV news, Ethan Tashabia. Now, graduates of the Institute of Legal Practice and Development, ILPD, have been urged to step forward and address issues in the justice sector. Gabi Mouvigny continues. This is the ninth graduation ceremony with over 254 graduates from 10 countries, including prosecutors, lawyers and judges who say they have acquired skills that will help them improve their day-to-day -day work. We have learned about the values and characteristics of a lawyer and analyzed them as well. We also had the opportunity to interact with people from different countries and share our experiences that will help us improve and build our careers. You know, in, in RPD during our program, we had uh, a lot of practice, like mood court, uh, mediation practice. It was very entertaining and we learned a lot that will help us to put it in practice during our like our our legal profession practice. The rector of the institution, Dr. Kaihura M. Didas, emphasized that skills taught are not only limited to knowledge, but also focuses on in-depth teaching that combines learning and integrity. We ask them to carry themselves with the level of professionalism we have taught them, but to add integrity to it as well. Anyone can perform their duties, but without integrity, justice can be compromised by corruption or laziness and can also lead to delayed trials. The Minister of Education, Dr. Valentine Uamaria, says the education sector is striving to provide solutions to existing problems and that the graduates have been trained to provide better services and to address the problems that Rwandans may have. They are aware of the problems people are facing and they have learned about the challenges and how to overcome them. So we hope that they are going to be productive in the field of justice and solve the problems that any citizens may have. The Minister of Justice and the Attorney General called on the graduates to make efforts towards the development of the judiciary. believe that your generation of, uh, of you graduates, with all your energy, questioning new perspectives and potential for innovation is well placed to positively contribute to the growth of the rule of law and justice. 
This is the ninth graduation ceremony at the Institution of Legal Practice and Development held at the headquarters in Nyanza District, awarding 254 graduates from different African countries with, post-grad- with postgraduate diploma in legal practice. Gabi Muvuni, reporting for RTV News. Cross-border traders in the East African community are calling for advocacy to remove trade barriers and to look at ways to improve the transport sector in the East African community. Some of the challenges highlighted include the increase in sales taxes, the delay of goods at the borders, and the availability of documents proving the origin of the goods. Some vendors and traders believe that advocacy is needed to address these barriers. We import a lot of raw materials, but we also export some of our finished products to neighboring countries. Now, it's uh, not been easy because of uh, sometimes the logistics cost are quite high. Uh, so our products end up not being very competitive. The vice chair of the East Africa Business Council, Dennis Karega, says the union is advocating for the East African community's domestication of airspace to facilitate business travels. <laughs> We want to simplify traveling in such a way that a person doesn't need special documents, special taxes, so that if a person is coming from Arusha, can just take a plane to Giseni and again take off to Nairobi. In fact, as of now, the only limitation would be the cost of the flights, otherwise flights will be available. That's why we are requesting for domestication of airspace so that we can travel more. The Director General of Trade and Investment at Ministry of Trade and Industry, Antoine Kajangwe, and Umutoni Shakira, Director General of African Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, confirmed that the government has also stepped up its efforts to address challenges in cross-border trade. We are in talks with PSF and EABC to find a solution whereby traders can get goods from nearby countries without having to go as far as China and India and use our planes like Rwanda and so on. There has been an issue regarding tax, removing roadblocks for traders coming from one country to another. And although this has not yet been properly implemented, that is why we have to work hard together as countries. During a meeting of representatives of the private sector in the East African Business Council and other stakeholders, it was explained that once the Democratic Republic of Congo joins the East African community, it will be the largest market in the world with a population of 250 million, which provides trade and investment opportunities, while the African market has a population of over 1.2 billion. Welcome back. In other stories making headlines globally, The world leaders have been told a warmer planet will also be a more violent one. The security implications of climate change were put to a meeting of the United Nations Security Council during a general assembly dominated by calls for stronger environmental action. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell, (laughs) I have with me the one and only Miss Rwanda 2021. Mm -hmm. Hi. <laughs> yes, Ingavide Grace. So um, let's begin by the crowning. Mm. You know, like, I think you didn't have enough time to explain, you know, the moment. Mm. How was it? How did you feel? Um, grateful uh, to God and uh, just like awaiting more um, possibilities <laughs> and more uh, opportunities because of the platform of course um and just because it's like a, a blessing because you have a platform where you have a voice yeah. um to uh, speak up for those uh that don't have the same platform to be the voice of the voice yeah. yeah yeah mm-hmm. you still you seem so calm and <laughs> low-key and you know you're such a you know unique miss randa you know what i'm talking about <laughs> yeah. um, so since the crowning moment uh, up until this time mm-hmm. um how was it how has the journey been for you H- has it been something you expected like how you had pictured it in, in case you win mm-hmm. or it was you know, <laughs> um it, uh, i definitely didn't know how it would look like 
Um, but I think it's been a learning experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just being exposed to different opportunities has been something uh, really uh, something I'm really thankful for. Mm -hmm. um, getting to work with different partners on different projects, um, and also I think um, I'm also grateful because even amidst COVID, uh, we're able to do some work online. Mm -hmm. um, so being able to think creatively, mm -hmm. um, even though some of that work has not been published, mm -hmm. but I think we'll. Uh, kind of shared that uh, in the end uh, of my rain Your report. Rain. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I think I can say it's more more learning mm -hmm. um, and just uh, trying to work around COVID, yes. uh, trying to uh, figure out how to do basically what I set out to do before. Mm -hmm. um, but also let's, just like let's actually yeah. dive then in, um, into the projects. Uh, what mm -hmm. are what are some of the projects you've done? Um, so we've done one project with, uh, in partnership with African Improved Foods mm -hmm. um, and the project was uh, basically aimed at uh, empowering community health workers. Mm -hmm. um, so these, they basically help uh, IAF in uh, supplying its products. So it was a project aimed at helping them to also develop themselves. Um, and we did this through giving them uh, small livestock, um, to be specific, pigs, mm -hmm. uh, because I think they they have a faster um, return on mm -hmm. investment. Um, so that was one of them. Uh, another one was a project we did uh, in partnership with the um, Gatagara, and uh, this was to recognize the efforts of the ex-combatants um, and just helped uh, in giving them uh, wheelchairs or um, arm crutches, leg crutches for those who were disabled. Um, mm -hmm. But it was mainly also to just like give them basically a small a start. Uh, yeah, something to, uh, to, <laughs> to thank them for. Know, yeah. So okay, yeah. let's let's now go to yeah. you're going to for Miss World. Mm -hmm. Uh, how are you preparing for it? And um, of course, you will be present representing Rwanda. Mm. So, what are some of the things that you're looking out for? You know, to stand out um, among us other contestants. We're talking about worldwide. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I think I'm really excited uh, because I think when I joined Miss Rwanda, I wasn't really thinking about this. Uh, the Miss World um, competition being as one, one of the things that I was going to get to do. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful to represent my country. Um, so I think for this one, I'm actually having a very warrior mindset. <laughs> Uh, so um, I think uh, basically it's just trying to um, condition uh, my attitude, uh, go with a winning uh, mindset. Wow. I think that's the most important thing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, get ready physically, mentally. Um, but yeah, have uh, the right attitude. <laughs> that's, that's actually yes. the most important thing, you know, yeah. and leave the moment and... You know, yeah. get to be present. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, any few words you would like to share with, you know, public? Mm, yeah. Um, I think it's just like uh, on next week, we have a performance. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, at uh, at um, Udwi at the mm -hmm. memorial, uh, Genocide Memorial. Uh, it's a Mashirka project, mm. but I'll be part of it. So guys, please come and uh, watch. <laughs> yeah. So you heard her. Please do attend. It's once again Miss Rwanda 2021 in Gavide Grace. Yes. You're indeed graceful. You know? <laughs> personality. She's actually she. a graceful and calm in person. So um, to sum up, uh, that's all we had for you. And um, on behalf of the entire news production team, thank you for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. I'm Grace. Miss <laughs> Rwanda. Thank you. 2021. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend. Mm.